Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Owens. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Owens. Hope you're having a great day. I get asked a lot, what's the best way, or what's the best way to get started doing an exercise program? And so today, today I sat down and developed a little uh, introductory beginner exercise program that anybody can do. All you need is uh, a stretchy band and a door. And if you have these other weights, great. You can use them. But if you don't, you don't need them. All right, so here's the routine. Uh, the rules of the routine you're going to do you're, when you first start, you're only going to be doing two sets for each exercise of 10 to 12. So two sets of 10 to 12 as you get more advanced or as you work with it a little while, you'll move up to three. Uh, but start with two. Start short. Consistency is the key more than one big Herculean effort. Uh, just stay consistent. Even if you did consistent small workouts, uh, you will still have that positive effect on overall health, longevity, decreased colds. You'll get all the positive benefits of that. So, the first, when we, when we put together our workout program, we want to include all the major exercises. And so, I put together this little routine uh, to, to do that. The first exercise you're going to do on each leg, you're going to do two sets of 10, remember, or 10 to 12 is the lunge, and it's real basic. If you have some weights you can grab, great. If you don't, that's no problem. But you're just going to step forward and then down. And then you're going to pop back up. Forward, down, and back up. The lunge is easier to do than, let's say, uh, a squat type activity because it really doesn't take very much coordination. It's a great beginner exercise. You, anybody can step forward and pop back up. Whereas getting into exercises like a squat, you want to have good form. So if you want to, you know, get some maybe some instruction when you're when you're intro, you know, first starting to do squats. With the lunges, you don't need that. And that is that's going to give us our major uh, exercise for the leg. Exercise would be the one that uh, you want to have for your core or your abdomen. My favorite one on that is the plank. If we come over here. We are just going to do a 20 second hold uh, as the whole set. So for a plank, you're just keeping your, your body nice and tight. If you're very beginner, you can do it on the knees. If that's pretty easy, come on up to your feet and you're just going to hold. You're going to hold for 20 seconds. Okay? And that's fairly self explanatory. Our bands come into play. For our fourth exercise, we're going to do the chest press. And with the chest press, you're going to come out until you feel a nice little bit of tension on the bands. Keep your elbows comfortably at your side, and then you're going to just press forward. You'll feel your chest, your triceps, upper shoulders contract as you do this. Again, we're going to do this 10 to 12 times. Two sets we're going to do is for the upper back. Again, we're using our stretchy band. If you're doing this at home, you'll put this in the door. And you'll put it securely into the door where the hinges go. Close it tightly and uh, make sure it's real steady before you do this. But do in a row. This helps the upper back, the shoulders. For this one, we'll, we can give our nice little scapular contraction there and row back. Pull it. If it's uncomfortable here, pull it a little lower. Or you can pull it a little higher. If you want to concentrate on the upper back, honestly, it doesn't matter just as long as you're getting some basic, some of the basic form in there. Again, two sets, starting out, two sets of uh, 10 to 12 reps. Hands up, hands down, does not matter. I'd like to vary it a little bit. 
personally when I do this one at home. So that's our aerobics exercise. Is an exercise for the bicep, called a bicep curl. And bicep curls can be done in a lot of different uh, ways, but the real basic way to do it, if you have your band set up at home, take your take your anchor and put it low on the door and connect it. And that way you can do your curls right there. And very basic, we want to lean back just a, just a touch, make sure our arms are extended fully, and curl up. So we work this motion. It is a bit of an isolation exercise. The biceps are used, however, during almost every activity, from carrying groceries to uh, picking up wood. So it's good to have a strong set of biceps for function in everyday life. Again, we're doing two sets, our last one. For this one, this is the tricep press down. For this one, you want to hook your anchor in up high. High on the door so you can lean or come back a little bit from the doorway. And the motion is simply taking that and pushing straight down. Keep your elbows locked in by your sides on this one. We'll lock them in. You can get a little sloppy with it. You'll still get the, you'll still get the job done. Fully contracting all the way out, you'll totally feel the muscle uh, doing doing its thing. If you just come to here or kind of sloppy with the motion, you won't get the same benefit. So really have a nice concentrated motion, and you'll get the work into, those, into the back of the arms, which uh, a lot of ladies want to, you know, tone that, the bottom of their arms up. Uh, a lot of men want to have nice, you know, guns and, and, and t-shirts. How does this help in health, though? All resistance training helps osteoporosis. That's the, that's the situation where the bone density decreases. The bones are stimulated by resistance training, uh, which is why I prefer resistance training over something like aerobics. Aerobics is good and, and needs to be done but resistance training is absolutely vital when it comes to joint, uh, I'm sorry, osteoporosis and bone health. The second thing, moving the joints of the body through their, for their full range of motion will help your arthritis. You just can't do it to the point where you're feeling pain. So uh, these health conditions are all improved by a good full body workout. Don't push yourself to the point of exhaustion. It's just not necessary. This should take you 10 to 15 minutes to get through this. Do some light stretching before and after, and uh, you'll have a, a really nice little workout that you can expand upon as you get as you get more advanced, and it'll help Hello you. Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Owens. Strengthening exercise for the subscapularis for the for the front of the shoulder blade. It also helps keep the shoulders nice and tight. Every shoulder problem should be doing these, and it's referred to in um, most circles I've heard is called the push up plus. And in a push-up, of course, we're doing this. And that's a basic push-up. It's foundation for a lot of workouts. What's often neglected is, is the little ranges of the shoulder that have to be there for, uh, the little muscles of the shoulder that have to be there for shoulder stability. With the push-up plus, we're working those little muscles. And we rock, to do it, we, we rock down, and you feel the tension towards the back and then almost like lengthen the arms and arch the sh and roll the shoulders forward. And as you go through this motion, you'll feel it really tightening and strengthening down here. You'll, you may even feel some lactic acid burn. Start on all fours with a light. That way you have a nice light weight. You may feel the lats in this exercise a little bit. I do a, I do a bit. As it gets stronger, you can go out to more of the girly push-up position as the push-up plus gets stronger. But there's no need to go with any great weight on this. I mean, if you weren't feeling anything, you could go to the full-on push-up position and work it through. I really get a burn on that. So uh, I typically do it in the girl push-up position or even on all fours because I'm doing it in preparation for... Um, your chest workout, your shoulder workout, where you want to get the shoulders really warmed up. But it'll help with the strength of the shoulders. It'll help with the shoulder pain uh, type problems as well. 
Thank you for watching my video. Dr. Owens, Chiropractic of Bellevue. Welcome to our new office. Uh, today I wanted to go over with you a typical office visit, uh, which is a treatment that we do every day, the checks that we go through, what we look for, what we correct on the, the, uh, the spines to help the people's health every single day. So today we're going to use Kate as, uh, as our uh, model, and she's going to help us uh, demonstrate this whole thing. So Kate, uh, let's have you start out face up on your back. Now, I typically will start out face up on the back because I, I need to address the, the cervical region or the neck. So as we check through the neck, the main thing I'm looking for, as we've talked about in my other visits, is both misalignment but also the ability of the spine to move freely. The free motion of the spine, every bone of the spine that's essential for health and nerves and nerve health in the area. So as we check, we see that there's some slight uh, fixations and bones out of place in our lower neck, so we're going to go ahead and correct those. We wouldn't necessarily use this on this manipulation on kids or elderly people, uh, but for someone like Kate, it's perfect because we're able to restore that little bit of motion in there. And we do the same thing, that lower neck here. Good. Excellent. And we'll come back to that in a little while with the instrument to just fully restore it. But I found that using the manual adjustment first really gets the big problems out of the way, and then we're, we're able to fine tune it with the instrument later. So we found a misalignment in her middle back here. And we're just going to free up the motion in that area. Now we're going to check her lower back. Turn towards me and just like, okay. So as, as we go through systematically the this, this spine, there may be other problems that need that take precedent, but on on average, I'm going to check things in this order. You can see with my hands, I'm motioning the spine. I'm using her hips to motion the spine to feel what's moving and what's not moving and what's jammed. Kate has a, a bone that's jammed in the upper lumbar area, so I'm going to contact this. Do a just a little correction there. Okay, okay, let's go on your stomach, face down. Now, typically after the, we, we check the main areas, there's some fine-tuning that needs to happen. And for that, I use the Arthur Stem. You may have seen the Arthur Stem on my other videos. It's just a tapping instrument that introduces motion into the spine. So, we're going to just work the spine. Kate has, a, has an older injury down here in the lumbosacral region, so we're going to just free this up. And I free it up until I start to feel that nice springy function. That tells me that we've introduced all the new motion that we can, and the body has to go, you know, the body has to do it, the healing process after that. Ultimately, what we're doing is we're freeing up what motion we can for the day. And then the body, the, the, the patient has to go home and the body will start to reconstruct the area and, and do the healing. The healing takes place at home in between visits. Almost like when you're working out at the gym. You don't get bigger and stronger while you're working out. You get bigger and stronger after your body heals from the workout. Okay. There's an area in Kate's mid-back that we're going to touch up. Here. This is a, an adjustment that actually does help restore the cervical curve. Many of you that have seen chiropractors before maybe have x rays where your, the normal healthy curve of the neck has been lost. This helps restore that, or at least the function of that area, so that you then don't go on to develop the arthritis that comes from having bones that are being stuck in the same place and not moving. So, again, our whole goal is restore the function and motion of the spine. A healthy, movable spine does not develop arthritis. A healthy, movable body does not get sick. So, this is a very gentle rib adjustment that I've been working with and developed to kind of allow the rib cage to move so that full breathing can occur. Energy levels improve when the when the breathing occurs normally. 
lot, a lot happening during a real typical office visit, and a lot that we decided to include in our just routine protocol, mainly because it, these are the things that, due to the stresses that we're experiencing in life, the body needs. So we we'll just continue to work that out until we feel that nice springy motion where it was really tight before. Just a touch up there. Now, at that point, Kate normally does this. We've restored all the motion and function into the spine that we can for that day. Now, I like to just do use a device called the Genie Rub or the Master Massager. And what we're doing at this point is putting vibration into the spine. It's taking the areas of correction that we've done and we're like enforcing it. We're putting the shellac on it, so to speak. So we're waking, wakening up the whole body, enhancing all those nerve impulses so that healing occurs that much faster. It also can remove any residual soreness that may exist. So this is normally the part that my assistant Kate, who I'm working on, she'll normally be doing this part of the uh, of the treatment with you and uh, quite frankly it tends to be the, the part of the treatment that people like the most so don't worry we won't uh, we won't skip you on this process if you're, if you're in here for the treatment this is included every single time so make sure we get all those muscles down the side the rib cage there good 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 Miss Kate, you're all done. And that's our typical office visit here at Chiropractic of Bellevue. I'm glad you could uh, stop by with us at least virtually today, and we'd love to see you here in the office in the future. Again, our number is 425-802-5432. Give us a call. Thank you for watching my video. Have a great day.